Um, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you're going to be watching me. Um, I want to welcome you to uh, a tutorial class for beginners. A tutorial class for beginners. And um, we just want to um, sensitize us on what is expected of you as a keyboardist, a beginner who wants to learn, who wants to scale in music. Um, you must have, have it at the back of your mind that music is life. Music is good. Music is enjoyable. You know, um, going in this direction will help you even to improve your earth life and everything about you. So, what are the things you need to know about music? What are the things you need to know in learning keyboard? You must be familiar. You must familiar yourself with the keyboard, the white keys, the black keys. You must, at the tip of your finger, you will be able to identify all the keys. Where is key C? Where is key G? Where is key A? Where is your B flat? Where is your G major? Your F major? These are very, very important. So for you to really grow faster in learning keyboard, you must identify, you know how to identify the keys. And this will help you when you want to play the keyboard, how to play your, your, your pattern, how to scale from one, um, from one chord to the other, to the other. So you must have a full understanding of all the keys. You must have a full understanding of all the keys. And more importantly, practice. They say practice makes perfection. So whatever you learn, you must put it to practice. In fact, it's recommended that uh, if you want to learn a keyboard, you should have access to a keyboard. If you are not honing it, at least have access to it that whatever you are taught, you'll be able to put it in practice. This will help you to grow faster, quickly as possible. So the practice makes perfection. So you must practice. It is not negotiable for you to excel, for you to you know, be able to improve as much as possible. So another important thing I would like to just give us a tip that I would like to give us um, in playing keyboards, your sitting position is very important. Your sitting position will help you a lot. It will help you a lot to be able to, you know, navigate through all the keys, be able to, you know, in playing your chords, in my major chords, your minor chords, your augmented chords, and all that. You know, your sitting position is very important. You must be able to sit conveniently and be able to place your finger on the keyboard and play it very well. These are just few tips. And in more of our subsequent um, classes, you will be able to find introduction on how to play keyboard. Watch out for the next episode. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, welcome to keyboard tutorial class for beginners. Um, today we'll be taking you through some major aspects that you need to know in order for you to you know, skate through the music. So um, in today's um, class will be taking you through some major aspects. We'll start with identification of keys on the keyboard. So this is a typical keyboard and the typical keyboard has about, a traditional keyboard has about 88 keys. Uh, what does that mean? 88 keys comprises of um, the black keys and the white keys. These are the white keys. These are the white C as you can see, and these are the black keys. These are the black keys. So the black keys are actually segmented. You have the two, the three, the two, the three, the two, the three, in that direction. So there, there are reasons for this. So we could have a keyboard that is more bigger than this. Of course, if we can't, this might not be up to its eight keys, but a very wide keyboard, a standard keyboard we have. It's eight keys with a larger octave. So um, we're going to start with identification of key, like I said. So these are the white keys, like I said, and these are the sharp keys. For the white keys, between the white and the black keys, there's what we call the semitone. Between the white key and the black key is called the semitone. So between the white key and the next white key is a whole note. 
is called a whole knot. I, I say it again, between the white key and the black key is called a semitone, and between a white key and a white key is called a full note. That is a full note. So all the keys on the keyboard have their own numbers and they have their own notes. For instance, when you see a two black keys, the first white key preceding a two black key is called the natural key. This is key C. And majorly this is called the middle key. It is key C. It, it can be easily be identified when you see two black notes and the, 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 the white key preceding the, the two black notes is called the key C. This is key C. This, you can find it here. This here. This another C key. This C. And this is also C. So it's it goes in that direction. So between this, this is C, the next key is G followed by E, F, G. After G, the next key is A, B, C. So between that first C and the last C is called an octave. This is an octave. This is also an octave. This is also an octave. This is an octave. Is an octave. Better still, we can as well name it this way that for every key, start with a note called Do. This is Do. Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Do, Ti, La, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. So every note on the keyboard starts with note Do. So this is Do. This is C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that is that. That is for key C. So if, if you are asked, can you touch the key of F? Always remember that the, the key, the first two keys, the first two black key, the key, the, the, the white key preceding it is C. So you can start counting from here C, D, E, F, and this is F. In other words, you can also say, how do I identify key F? So you have, like I said, the black key are segmented in, 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 in groups. We have the two. We have the three, we have the two, we have the three. So the three, the three black keys, the white key preceding the first black key is key F. Is F. The white key preceding the first black key is key C. This, this is C. This is F. I could start to start from here. F. The next key after F is G. After G is A. It means it is called A. And not H A after F G the next one is A so when you have A you start again A B C so go back to C so we can go on and on so now for this we've identified that the first key the first white key preceding the black two key is C so in music when you go up when you move up to the black key after the C is called sharp. Meaning that if it is C, this is my C sharp. If this is C, this is my C sharp. So when you move up to a black key, it's called sharp. So when you come down, what key is this? This is D. Remember we said this is C, this is D. So in music, when you move back, when you go back to the black, moving towards Send it towards the black key and you are moving back, it's called flat. So if this is my D, this is my D flat. At the same time, it's also C sharp. Like we mentioned that this is C, this is my C sharp, this is D, this is my D flat. So this particular key can be called 
either C sharp or D flat. So in music, no, when you see D flat or you see C sharp, you should know that it is the key. Likewise, we have in between some key, we don't have uh, black keys. For instance, if it, this is my C, D, E, this is F. Between my E and F, there's no sharp. So it's called a semitone. Between E and F is a semitone. Likewise, we have it between B and C is a semitone. Let's take one another one for example. We've identified, let's take another one for example. We've identified this to be F and Y the next key is to be G. If we are to identify this particular key, it means that this is G, except if you move back, if you move back towards the black key, it's called flat. So if this is my G, so this is my G flat. This is my F. So if you move up, from your F to the sharp key, if you move up to the flat key, it's called sharp. So this is my F sharp. At the same time, it's my G flat. That's how to identify keys. So generally, we have 36 black keys on the keyboard, and we have 52 white keys. And we are able to you know, speak to what are flat key and what are sharp key. Flat key as when you move back from a, from a note backward to a sharpened key, it's called flat. When you move up from from a, from a major note up to a black key, it's called sharp. So we also mentioned that between the white the white key between the white key to the next one is a whole note. So this is D. This C, rather, and this is D. This is a whole note. From C, the black key is a semi, it's a half note. So the next thing is to us to also look at our fingering, fingering in keyboard. In keyboard, um, our fingers are very important. So this is my thumb, this is my index finger, this is my middle finger, this is my ring finger, and this is my pinky. So this is my number one, we call this one, we call this two, we call this three, we call this the ring four, the pinky five. I, see, I take it again, the thumb is one, the index finger is two, the middle finger is three, the ring finger is four, while the pinky is five. So this is very important when you want to play a piano. And your position, your positioning in playing the key, keyboard is very important. You must wear position. You must wear position to ensure that you are comfortable so that you don't have any issue in playing your keyboard. So the, those five keys are very important. The first one, so we will start, since we have started with um, the middle C, like I said, how do you identify the middle C? When you see the two sharp key, the key behind, um, the key just the, uh, immediate, the key, the immediate or penultimate key before the black key is the middle C. So this is my middle C. After the two black, the next one then is the middle C. This is my middle C. So we are starting with that. So this is the, this is my thumb. This is my index finger. This is my middle finger. This is my ring finger. And this is my finger. Your hand must be well placed. Your, your hand must be well placed on the keyboard. So when you are trying to learn on a keyboard, the identification of keys and the numbering is very important. So your 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 thumb must be on the first key, the second key, in, in that direction. Likewise, this is the right hand. Likewise, the same thing goes to the left hand. On the left hand, this is also your one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. So you place it that same. So this is C, so we're going to do the same thing. So you so 
finger must be well placed. You must be well placed. So you need to practice this. This needs practice. Make sure it is well placed. So your your positioning determine how you're able to place it where and you will also be comfortable. That should be very, very, very well noted. So um, this will help you to play pattern chords and keyboard. But before then, let's look at a little exercise that will help you uh, to navigate your finger. So we have this is A, B, F, S, S, F, M, I, R, E, D. So you should need to practice very well. You need to practice this gently. You need to practice this. It helps you. So when you want to run, like you said, we said this is do re mi fa so la ti do, meaning C D E F G A B C. So in keyboard, you must the the the, the finger will help you to be able to. Um, Run this case successfully on the keyboard. So, if you want to run it from do to do, this is how it works. Your, your thumb will go first, number, which is number one, and your index, number two, your middle C, number three. So, when I want to continue, I will switch. So, that is just to run this case from do to do. You must write it. Same way you can run it back. So when you want to run it back, you start again. Remember, you start with, with, with your pinky finger as your low, the higher notes of Do, followed by the ring finger, followed by the middle finger. Followed by the index finger, followed by the tongue finger, then you switch back to your middle finger to, to end the three notes middle finger, index finger, and tongue. If I want to go up my, my, my tongue finger, my index finger, my middle finger, then I switch to my tongue, my index, my middle finger, my ring finger, and my pinky. So this exercise must be practiced regularly. So the same way applicable to the left hand, the left hand, like we said, you know, since we are we are using the the, the, the key C, so so this is this one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So you want to run it. One, two, three, four, five. So that's for the thing. So you want to run a scale from do to do. You want to run it from do to the higher lower do to higher do. You start to see your thumb, the first finger, your index finger, your middle finger. You switch back to your thumb. Then, followed by the index finger, the middle finger, the ring finger, and the finger. So I'll be able to run. Do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. So if I want to go back again to my higher, higher do, higher octave, so I start again. With my left finger, I start with the feet. Start with my pinky finger, followed by my ring finger, middle finger, index finger. This is my thumb finger. This is something to be practiced. This is one, two, three, four, five. Tom is Tom. So Tom is my first one. That, that will be on the door. This is my Tom. It's one. Index. This is number two. Middle, middle finger number three. 
ring number four and ring gate number five. So if I want to run it, I want to run it, so I said, do next one, next one, you switch. You need to practice this. And if you want to run it from, um, you can as well run it, you can as well run it from do, do, so we start going to run it from lower do to higher do. So this, this is the, um, the pinky finger, followed by the ring finger, middle finger, index finger, the thumb, you switch. You want to run it to, to your middle finger, your ring finger, and the thumb. So this exercise must be practiced. Same way for the right hand. That is how to position the hand on a keyboard. So, how do we play chords pattern on the keyboard? How do you play chord pattern on the keyboard? So, I have to touch base on all this because all this is very important in application of knowledge in playing keyboard. Um, so, um, we're going to look at a simple a pattern for a keyboard, how to play a piano chord pattern on the keyboard. So, we we'll start with C. So, we identify this as our C, and we know this is our F, and this is our G. Like we said, the first two black key, the, the white key before the first two black key is our C. The white key before the first three key is our F. And the next one is our G. So to play a chord on a keyboard, very important. The, the, the five finger are very important. So if you're starting from C, this is the first note. So how do we identify the next note to pick for a chord? So um, you can't first step, first step, first step to know the next key. So we said from C, the black key is a step, that is one, and the semitone, that is half. From white key to the black key, the semitone is a, is a half step. From the white key to, from the black key to the white key is another, another half note, making two. From this white key to, to the next black key is another half note, making three. From the black key to the white key is another note making four that is four step four step so that's four step so you hold it that's one three the first finger the third finger which is the middle step, your middle finger then it was the next key to pick so remember we count four half step to know the next one so the next one will not be if the three half step to know the next note to pick. So from here now, we count between between E and F is a step. So this is one. Between white key and black is another step. Two. Between black key and white key, this is the third one. So you hold it with your pinky finger. So this is a chord. This is a chord, a major chord. The major chord for C. How do we arrive at it? We said identify the key you want to play with. If you're taking C, for instance, this is one, you count four half step to know the next note to pick. So from here to here, it's half step one. From this bracket to here, this is two. From here to here, it's three. From here to here, it's four. So we pick this and use our middle finger to pick it. And we said the next note to pick, you must count three half steps. So from this white key to this one, Always remember that between E and F is half. Between E and F is a half step, and between B and C is an half, half, half step. So this is half step. This is one. From here to here is two. From here to here is three. So that is three step. So this is called when you put it together. It's called block chord. And when you tap on it, it's called broken chord. That is for C. 
So the next one in pattern, in cut pattern, is G. And where is our G? Remember, we said the first white step before the three black key is, is F. This is F, then this is our G. So this is our G. So what is the next note to pick? Remember, for major chord, we are going to stand fourth half step. This is one, two, three, four. So we are picking this. After that, we pick the next three half sets. Between B and C is half set. This is one. This is two. This is three. So this is another, this is another chord. First one is this. Second one is this. So the next one is F. Why is it's G? But we just played F. It's G. This is our G. This is our F. After F is G. So we are turned on the first or G. So then to know the next note to pick, we come first step. This one, two, three, four. So your middle finger on this. After that, we come three step. Remember, between B and C is half step. So this is one, two, three. We come three. So we have so let's end it with a minor chord. With a minor chord. So we've started with C. This is chord of C. It's chord for F. It's chord for, for G. Then for A. This is A. This is A. A. Let's end it with a minor chord. So how do you identify a minor chord? A minor chord also has a step. So to get a minor chord, you can't be first. You, you're going to you're going to um, switch. When we're doing the major chord, we said the first note. Then we can first step. First step for the first note. The last note we can't three steps. So this time around, for for a minor chord, we will start with three step and we end it with four step. So we start with three. This is this is A. We count three. This is one, two, three. One, this, this is one, this is two, this is three. So we pick this, then we also count four step from here. So you have one, two, three, four. This is a minor chord. So I can start with this. Already you're playing, you're playing, you're, you're, you're creating a pattern, a chord. So I'll just, you know, play around with it. This is my, my C. Remember, this is my A minor. This is my, my G. This is my F. This is my F. So you're, you're on the journey to play keyboard. And this is my this is my C. I can go to my to my F, to my G. So you are, you already you started the journey in playing the keyboard. Remember what we did was just to identify the, the key C, the chord of key C. You identify G, which is this. You can also pick again. You also identify G, which is this. This can also be here. You also identify A, which is this. So we can just uh, transpose, play around, around with it.
So that's how to pay the part time. So we will improve on this. Um, I want us to practice this. And in our next class, we're going to we're going to give you more information and more you know tips on how to play the keyboard. It's going to be very interesting. It's going to be fun. I wish you a wonderful class. Thank you very much.